I was completely blindsided by the release of My Adventures with Superman Season 2. But honestly, I'm happy that I was surprised because this was a pleasant one. For those of you who don't know, there is a show called My Adventures with Superman and it follows a young Clark Kent in a completely different universe than we're used to. The storylines are all mixed up and I'm going to break it down for you. But first, can we just appreciate that DC Universe is going back to form with amazing animated content because this was amazing. And the fact of the matter is just, it's not just Superman that's coming out. We also have the Batman Cape Crusader series. We just saw the photos and it looks very retro. So if Superman is having the futuristic take, Batman is going to be retro. I love that. It's going to be amazing seeing Bruce Wayne on screen again. But today, we're not talking about Bruce Wayne. Today we're talking about Superman because Superman is back. And if you guys missed season one, go catch up. It was a good show. Don't listen to nobody. Yes, it was anime-like, but what's wrong with anime, bro? It was amazing. Not only did the super villains look different, their origin stories are different as well. You know I'm a fan of Elseworld stories, and this was an Elseworld story to say the least. We start off this season with Lex Luthor. I know, right? Last season, he was hinted at a lot. But this season, I guess we're going to see him in full force, even wearing his color theme of purple and green. I wouldn't say I'm a fan of the young Luthor, but I'm open to it. But the whole theme of this first two episodes that drops is the fact that we find out that Kryptonians are low-key Viltrumites. In this world, they are actually a warrior race who go out and conquer planets with their newfound abilities. And trust me, that explains a lot. Why the hell does Jor-El, a scientist, have an eye patch with a scar? We also find out that the Kryptonian race was wiped out by another race who was dangerously stronger than them. That is why kal and his cousin, yes, his cousin are the only two survivors. We see in a flashback how his mother looks like. We see his father as they send him off. But we also see his uncle loading up his own child for safety. The Kryptonians were about to be wiped out by another race. I love this concept because it never made sense to me that a very technologically advanced race would just stay on a dying planet. This is a better story for the Kryptonians. Yes, they were conquerors and they met their match. And I put everything that I love that the race was a technologically advanced race. So Brainiac's people, because for those of you who don't know, Brainiac is no AI. He's a race of aliens that are very in tune with the technological side of things. But the thing is, Clark is not just going to have to worry about aliens and Kryptonians. He has to worry about humans as well because Amanda Waller is heading a team that is literally specialized for taking out alien threats. And she has been building them from scrap with technology. So we have freaking Blockbuster, who for some reason is confident enough to think he can fight Superman. I mean, he threw some punches, yeah, but he's weak. We see Slade still hanging out with Walla and he's still following her orders like a dog. I was never a fan of this, but I'm with it for this season at least. We see that Kryptonite is going to play a big role in this season because now Amanda Walla sees the effects he has on Superman. So she got a taste like she usually does. But I mean, can we talk about Slade again? Because I wasn't a fan of this design, but he looks good. <laughs> Everyone looks good. I mean, the animation is peak in this show. But back to the story. Yeah, Lois Lane's father, who used to head this division, was kicked out and Amanda Waller took over the position. We see that when she's in command, she's basically a bad guy. Normally, this whole operation was supposed to be pro the protection of humanity, but Amanda Waller is taking that a step further. She's completely racist. I mean, she don't mess with nobody outside of Earth. Everyone outside of Earth is her enemy and she will do anything to weaponize anybody around her to fight that threat. We see that her and her organization are single-handedly building an army of superpowered individuals, especially the Atomic Skull. Jesus Christ, I love this character. If you read the comics, you know he's just a psychopath that just likes to fight. And he loves to fight because as soon as he sees Superman, it was on sight. Go watch the show because that battle is intense. We see that all this time, Amanda Waller was just trying to compensate. She wasn't enjoying being number two. So being number one is where she belongs. And she's not afraid to pull out the Glock as well. Because when she's under threat, she pulls out that pistol. Even if it did absolutely nothing. 
But the biggest what the hell moment came at the end of the episode because we see Lex Luthor finally stepping into the fray, finally joining his side, and he is standing next to Amanda Waller. And this is not the Lex we are used to. This Lex has hair. Jesus Christ, only God knows the type of shit he will get into. I cannot wait for this season. I am excited for it, and you should be too. We will be covering it every week, and I will break it down for you as best I can. Peace.